Good morning to all our St. Matthew Church family. I certainly regret that we're not able to be all here together today, but because of the threat of the COVID-19 virus, and it's peaking here in our community now, and the fact that several of our church families have had it and are now recovering from it, it just seemed the wise thing for us to take a break from public gatherings until we are sure that it is safe again. Please keep in prayer our families that have been affected by COVID and, and pray that God will give them a quick and a complete recovery from it. Also continue to remember Angela Edwards, a sister, Patricia and her sister-in-law, Susan. Uh, both have had open heart surgery this past week. Susan has been released from the hospital and is now recovering at home. And we praise the Lord for that. And, and Patricia is expected to be released either today or on Monday. So please keep uh, praying for their total recovery and healing and of course, continue to pray for different ones that you and I know about in our congregation that need our continued prayer. Now would you please join me in prayer this morning. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we give you the glory and honor. We have come to celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, how blessed we are that he has come into our life and that he has took upon himself the burden of our sins and has uh, cleansed us and given us a renewed mind and given us hope for our future and given us a brand new life in Christ. And all of these things would not have ever been possible had not Jesus come as a little baby boy born to a, a virgin uh, Mary uh, who um, consented and said, Lord, be it unto me even as thou sayest. Lord, we're so grateful for all that you did for us and that you continue to do for us and the joy of Christmas far beyond the lights and the sounds and the and the wonderful smells of the of the food that we uh, get to partake of and the wonderful fellowship that we have with one another the greatest joy of all and the very reason for the season is because of the most wonderful gift of all the gift of Jesus Christ coming into our heart and in our lives Lord we do lift up the the needs of all those in our congregation who are needy today. We thank you, Lord, that you are with them. We believe that you are healing them and helping them. And thank you, Lord, for supplying all our needs according to your riches and glory. By Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning we get to read the Christmas story. And if you want to follow along with me, turn to the book of Luke, chapter 2. We're going to begin reading with the first verse there. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Right this moment, I, 
I want to focus on this word that is called decree. What is a decree? To make a decree is to have a, an authoritative order having the force of the law. Decrees are typically enforced, and if not upheld, those who break decrees are punished with the severity of the punishment equal to that of the level of whatever the decree prohibits. In our Christmas story today, for example, in ancient Judea, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This decree, commanded by Caesar Augustus, was mandatory and was like a census for the purpose of taxing all the population. The local citizens had to return to their place of origin. They had to return to their place of birth so that taxes could be levied and the number of citizens could rightly be determined. The Roman government didn't take lightly to anyone refusing to follow the decree of Caesar. This follows what Solomon wrote about God concerning decrees in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 15. By me, this is God speaking, by me kings reign and rulers decree what is just. God is saying that he is the one that puts rulers in authority. And when they fail to decree what is just, he will remove them from their thrones. All throughout history, God has honored kings who were just, and he has removed kings who were not just. But did you know that kings and rulers are not the only ones to make decrees? We live in a day in which God has given authority to believers in the ecclesia. That is a word that means the church. That when we as the ecclesia say what Jesus says in the Bible, then the things we say must be obeyed by Satan and all satanic forces and influences. And also circumstances must come into alignment with what we say when we declare that the promises of God are true in faith believing. Jesus once cursed an olive tree because he was disappointed when it came to it and it had no fruit. And the disciples were simply astonished when the tree was dead a day later. It is here that Jesus teaches them about the power of decrees when we have faith in God. And we find that in Mark 11, chapter, uh, Mark chapter 11, verses 20 through, 22 through 24. So I'm going to read Mark 11, verses 22 through 24 now. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it'll be done for them. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, Believe that you receive it and it will be yours. And I want to say it a little bit differently because I want you to get and understand the point that Jesus is trying to make. And, and it goes something like this. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, anyone who decrees to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they decree will happen, it'll be done for them. All the authority 
of the word of God is behind us when we say with our mouth what Jesus has already said in the word of God about us. That is the equivalent of decreeing it. And if we grow not weary, but we stand firm, it must come to pass. Now let us continue reading the story about the birth of Jesus Christ. And we're going to begin in Luke chapter 2, verse 6. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them there in the end. <laughs> Oh, 
continue reading the story about the birth of Jesus Christ. Verse 6. No, it's verse 8. I'm sorry. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the Lord said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. When we look at the angel's announcement of Jesus to the shepherds, we find many titles given to Jesus that have great meaning to us as Christians. The first one of those is, is Savior. But what we don't understand about Savior, which in Greek is, is called Sotor, but that Greek word Sotor really means it doesn't just mean Savior, but it means much more. It means Deliverer. It means Healer. And it means Preserver. Jesus is our Savior. He's our Savior from all our past sins. Aren't you glad for that? But also, He is our Deliverer from the dominion of Satan. And He is the healer of all who believe upon him in mind, in soul, and in body. And Jesus is preserver for all who receive him as Lord of lords and King of kings. They will themselves inherit eternal life and be preserved forevermore. And then he is called Christ. And the angel said, when he called him Christ, that Greek word for us is Christos, and it means the anointed one, the Messiah. Jesus is the one that is anointed. He is the anointed one, and he is Lord. In Greek, that word is kurios, and it means not just Lord, but it means absolute Lord. It means he is the highest authority upon the earth. There is no higher authority. There is no higher power than Jesus Christ. And then he is also deliverer. He is the Savior. He is the healer. He is the preserver. He is the anointed one. He is the highest authority in the universe. That was what the angel was saying to the disciples. And look at the special gifts brought to humanity because of the birth of Jesus Christ and his destined purpose to be the Savior of all mankind. 
The angels decreed that the coming of Jesus was good tidings of great joy to all men. And they decreed that his coming was peace on earth. And then they decreed that his coming was good will towards all men. And then they decreed that his coming was to be the Savior, the forgiver of all the transgressions of all mankind. All that we have to do is freely accept what he has already given. Concerning humanity, God is not against man, but he is for him. And he has made every provision possible to reconcile mankind to himself and to demonstrate his good will towards mankind. Luke chapter 2 verse 12 also speaks of something very unique and important to each of us. For it says here, and this will be a sign unto you. A sign to who? Well, it was a sign specifically and especially for these shepherds. They said that you'll find a babe wrapped in swaddling, swaddling clothes. And this word babe or, or brephos in the Greek, it means a newly born babe just several hours old. And then they talked about the swaddling clothes that they were wrapped in. This was strips of material, and it was used by the shepherds themselves to wrap the legs and the, of, of the newborn lamb that was just newly born. And then they said, you're going to know that this is the Lamb of God because when you see him, he'll be in a manger. And he'll look just like a lamb, wrapped in swaddling clothes, just like you've wrapped up your own newborn lamb so many times. It was a special sign just for the shepherds. God always goes to special lengths to make himself known to us. And he does it in a way that is unique for every person. Jesus is not just some dogma we believe in. He is a person that we receive into our hearts. And his spirit lives within each and every believer. And we know him. Because he is known to us and made himself known to us in a unique and individual and special way for every believer. And now let's continue to read the Christmas story, picking it up with verse 15. And it came to pass. As the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they made haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Can you imagine what type of effect this had upon the shepherds? And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at these things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. Mary kept all these things in her heart as a precious possession, kept from corruption as a very pure memory 
Luke, the writer of this gospel account that we have just read, no doubt had heard this story from Mary herself, who had kept these memories precious and pure, hidden in the secret place of her heart. Stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and sorrow pining till he appeared and the song found his word. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn.
aren't you glad for that divine night that came? Aren't you glad that Jesus gave his gave up his heavenly throne and, and he came to earth as a little baby boy so that he could then become the Lamb of God worthy as a sacrifice to be the sin offering for all our sins and to die for us so that we could be restored to the Heavenly Father and live with Jesus forevermore. And now from my home to your home, Tina and I wish you a very merry and wonderful Christmas season. And until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his countenance to shine upon you. And may he give you his peace that passes all understanding. And until we meet again, may you be blessed Beyond measure is my prayer. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas.